mad scientist than medical science. But tonight, Chief Science Correspondent Robert Bazell takes us on a journey to the frontiers of medicine. Our guide is a courageous 13-year-old in search of a cure. Everything you do, say, see, think, everything you are, all shaped by the most complex living structure in nature, the 100 billion nerve cells of the human brain, an instrument of astonishing power, except when it doesn't work. Are you having a, are you having a seizure right now, Casey? Yes. This is typically what happens? Yeah. Casey Cave's brain is out of control. For the past four years, it's been under siege, battered by an electrical storm within, wave after wave of epileptic seizures, often hundreds each day, have nearly destroyed the 13-year-old's ability to use her right arm and leg to speak, and even her ability to think. You like some water, Casey? Is that what you're wanting? Uh, what? You want to drink water? Is that what you're wanting? No, oh, thank you. Oh, okay. This is the story of the courage of one young girl and the faith of her family. It's also about the frontiers of medicine, attempting to understand the human brain, and the heroic effort to save a single life. Casey Caves from Tulsa, Oklahoma, had been a bright and healthy child and the pride of her mother, Regina. This is a child that made straight A's and she didn't have to do anything. And now she just struggles to do the simplest task. The first sign of trouble began on a hot day in the summer of 1992. My first seizure, I mean, major seizure, about the fourth grade. When we first met Casey in early November of last year, she had a clear memory of that day four years ago when her life changed forever. But her epilepsy had damaged her ability to talk about it. And I was, and I, and I, and, 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 I, and I, it was hot day. She was walking around the room with her head jerked and she was snatching things from the air. And, uh, her whole right side had kind of tightened up and her face was kind of droopy and we ran her to the hospital. It was epilepsy, but not the more common kind that can be controlled with medication. She had a rare and devastating condition called Rasmussen syndrome. It starts in one place and gradually, like a Pac-Man, eats more and more away. Dr. John Freeman of the Johns Hopkins Children's Center is the expert Casey's parents turn to. The only thing that can happen is that it will get worse. If it's on the left side of the brain, as with Casey's case, it will, they will lose language and they will lose intellect. And the longer you wait, the less likely you are to get recovery. Dr. Friedman offered Casey's parents a remedy, but it will shock you, just as it shocked Casey's parents. The only way of treating it is to take out that bad half of the brain. Isn't that a very primitive kind of medical... It's treatment. a terrible kind of medical treatment. It makes no sense to cut out half of the brain, but it's the only thing that works. The operation, called a hemispherectomy, is brutally simple to understand. Surgeons remove the entire left half of Casey's brain, the half of the brain that is the source of the seizures. The empty space would fill with spinal fluid. And while a human being can survive such drastic measures, they face extraordinary risks. Casey's parents looked at their precious 10-year-old and could not imagine her with half a brain. For them, it was an impossible choice. Johns Hopkins had called us and told us that, you know, this is what your daughter faces. And I was very rude. I said, no way. We'll fight it. We'll beat it. I won't do this. To really think that you might have to take out part of someone's brain, my reality says you don't have to, you can't do that. You can't live through something like that. Hi, Casey. So for three years, Casey's parents tried everything else. Minor operations, special diets, blood transfusions, and powerful drugs. Casey, have you taken your pill yet? Yes, I'm just taking my pill. Casey's decline continued. Still, knowing the terrible risks involved, her parents couldn't bring themselves to go ahead with the surgery. A parent has to say that my child's future is so bleak that I agree that you can take out half of her brain. Yes, 
They have to say exactly that. And they have to say, in addition, that my f child's future is so bleak that death would be preferable if, God forbid, it should come. Casey's parents finally agreed in the spring of 96. The epilepsy had continued to destroy Casey's brain. She was wheelchair bound. She couldn't keep up in school. Her mind was failing. For Casey, there had never been any doubt. She had always wanted the surgery to rid herself of the horrible seizures. Her parents had finally caught up to their daughter's resolve. It got so bad. as She was doing so poorly. Um, it wasn't fair to her. When she would have to go into a wheelchair, she was devastated. She wanted to be on her own. She didn't like being dependent on someone pushing her around and helping her up and down and around when she would fall. No, I, this is Casey wanted a life, and Casey deserved a life. But what kind of life would it be? What doctors hoped for was an amazing transformation in Casey's brain. They hoped that when the diseased left half was removed, the right side of Casey's brain would reinvent itself, taking over the thoughts, memories, and language that had been on the left. But this operation had worked best in very small children. The doctors did not know if it would work in someone as old as Casey. So Casey and her family prepared for the worst, calling on their deep religious faith. Since the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, the surgery could leave Casey paralyzed on the right side. So in the weeks leading up to the operation, she practiced how to live left-handed. She eats with it, brushes her teeth. Been trying to practice getting those shoes on with one hand, but boy, that's hard. That's hard. <laughs> And because the left side of Casey's brain controls language, the surgery could leave Casey unable to speak. So she practiced sign language. Thank you, you're welcome. Yes, no, eat, drink. We're hoping that's going to be helpful if we have some language problems after surgery. But no. No. <laughs> it was November 8th of last year. Thank you. The surgery was scheduled in just four days. All day long, friends visited to say goodbye. In a few hours, the family would leave Tulsa for Baltimore. For the doctors at Johns Hopkins, it is no routine event. Casey could die during the surgery, or she could survive without thoughts or speech. It's awful. It's awesome. It's frightening. And any time we go into this, we go in with fear and trepidation. But the family has to be on our side. Wes Caves was not sure he was on the doctor's side. In a cruel twist, just weeks before the scheduled surgery, Casey was able to get up out of her wheelchair, which gave her father one last chance to question whether they should go ahead with the radical surgery after all. Does it make you wonder if you want to go have the surgery? Yeah, I'm going to go have that surgery. But now that you can walk, okay. so you still think this is what we ought to do, though? Yes. Neurosurgeon Ben Carson is one of the pioneers of the procedure he will perform on Casey. Does it give you pause to take out half of a child's brain? Absolutely. Uh, it gives me pause every time I even look at the human brain because, you know, you look at this mass of amorphous looking stuff and you realize that this is what makes a person who they are. This is a good day. This is it. Everyone knows we're heading out of here and we're trying to start this trip. After four years of anguish, hesitation, and prayer, the moment for the surgery had arrived. In a 12-hour operation, the doctors removed the diseased half of Casey's brain. Where there were billions of brain cells, there was now only empty space, the white area in this brain scan. Casey survived. Her seizures were gone. But it would be weeks before anyone found out just what price she had paid. When we return, was it worth it? And then you sit here and you look at this and it's like, it's not like you have the choice of going back. Everything we've ever done. Coverage of Decision 97. Let's take a look now at the latest results from that very tight race for governor of New Jersey, now with 33% of News Channel 4. Well, we've made it. Oh, we got plugged. Last winter, after years of high cholesterol, Mike Vaughn had a heart attack. He spoke to his doctor about Zocor. Free for lunch? Yeah, I'm free. <laughs> Be right back. 
fried chicken. Returning to our story, in a remarkable operation, 13-year-old Casey Caves, seen here before the surgery, has had half her brain removed to control a rare form of epilepsy. As you might expect, it's a very different Casey we meet now as she starts off on the road to recovery. Once again, here's Robert Brazil. Cane, right leg, left leg. Cane. It is 10 days since surgeons removed the left half of Casey Cave's brain. Her head is temporarily swollen. The change in her appearance is painful to see. She is in rehabilitation in Baltimore. Good job. Do you feel me? Do you feel it more? Her right hand is now paralyzed. Her right leg is 